Without further ado, um, welcome to the Monday, April 15th, 2024 Development Review Board meeting for the City of Montpelier. Uh, Meredith will briefly go over uh, remote meeting procedures and then we'll get started. So I'm going to, well, this will, you guys know the drill, Brian and Joe do. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share my screen. Oh, is that one? Ugh. I've got to make that small. <laughs> okay. Oh. There's somebody coming in. Okay, so for anyone viewing tonight's Development Review Board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you wanna join the full Zoom meeting um, experience, both seeing us and us seeing you, you can type this link into your web browser um, and I'll get a message that you want to be let in and do so. Alternatively, you can dial this phone number, 929-205-6099, and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. Um, again, I'll get a notice that you want to come into the meeting and let you in. If anyone is having problems accessing tonight's meeting, please email me at mcrandall at Montpelier hyphen vt.org. Um, if you do log in over Zoom for the full experience, if you can, please remember to change your um, login name to your first and last name. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, and for members of the public that are attending, if you wish to speak um, during one of the items on the agenda, please raise your hand. Um, and the um, when the chair calls on you, you can unmute yourself and speak. Um, when people are not speaking, please make sure to keep your microphone on mute. This helps reduce background noise. Um, if you call in via phone, um, you can mute or unmute using star six. Um, the Zoom chat function should be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. Um, if you have a question or comment about an item that's on the agenda, like I said, please raise your hand. Um, you can do this either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, if you dialed in on the phone, you can use star nine to have a little hand pop up and we'll be able to see that over Zoom. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? Yep. I'm going to hand this meeting back over to the chair. Sorry, I couldn't see what my buttons. I was like, I think we're done, but I yeah. need to cut you off. <laughs> no, no, no. Bring that up. I'll do by the thing. Um, um, and for people who come in in person, if you could sign in on the sign-in sheet, that would be great. So I guess I'm first, I'm looking for um, a motion to approve the agenda. Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. Those against? Excellent. So we have two applications in front of us tonight, um, which is great. And I think that if um, we move right along and just, uh, I think we should be able to get through both of them. And it doesn't look too, too tremendous to me. Um, the first applicant is uh, 14 Vine Street, which is Jamie Hansen. Are you Jamie? Hi. I mean, just have a seat right up there. And he's not, uh, this is a sketch plan review, yes. right? So he does not need to be sworn in, correct? Correct. That is what I thought. Okay. Um, Meredith, quick, quickie, quickie overview. Yeah. Yeah. So this is sketch plan review of a two parcel subdivision. So one parcel being divided into two. Um, where the one parcel will retain the existing structures and then the other parcel will be vacant um, with potential future development. Okay. Uh, and Jimmy, I'll have you describe it just a little bit. The one thing I did want to point out is that the house that is shown on that is not part of this, correct? 
there's like a building shown on the um now i'm confused which one? Oh, i don't think it's the existing structure which i'm like what page i'm like chris little map yeah what's subdivision yeah oh yeah right, 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 yeah right the proposed house right that was just, that's just a conceptual to show that a building right, but i just wanted to make there. sure that every box Back. right that, yeah yeah that is yep. that's that's not yeah, we're not voting on that we're not permitting that or anything right. else and i just wanted to point that out ahead of time it's just the that said, subdivision of the land um jamie do you want to go ahead and just tell us a little bit about what you're doing and what you've got planned here uh, yeah. mm. do make sure you're close to the microphone okay here. um yeah i guess um originally that was a separate parcel and i think back in the 29 flood that house was, they never rebuilt it or, so <clears throat> the house that I'm in now ended up buying that lot and it's been vacant ever since. Um, so I'm interested in making it an, an, its own lot and potentially um, developing it with a, another home. Okay. Oh. We do have it indicated to the proposed uh, two unit uh, structure. Is that just conceptual at this point? It's, you... Yeah, I think that ideally that's, if if I was going to do something myself, I would probably do a duplex. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if I choose to just sell the plot, okay, so that's, yeah. they can do a duplex. It's it, so they they know that they, it's... they can do anything that the zoning rates go out right. right so that piece of land flooded in twenty nine uh -huh. when the dam was built yes I'm interested yep. in the part where FEMA or the yeah. twenty seven twenty seven yeah, yeah twenty seven um and it's just been moved out of the floodplain designation oh the house has that loma is that what you're talking about yeah. So I remember, Jimmy, did you file for the Loma or did somebody else file for it before um, you bought it? We did something. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what So it the house itself is elevated enough so that FEMA said that that's what that paperwork is. The house is up above the base flood elevation. And so it's under federal law. It's removed from the special flood hazard area, but that's just the existing house. If... If Jamie were to put an addition on that house, that house would have to to comply with all of our existing floodplain regulations and actually be elevated more than the current house is. As would anything. As built. would anything new being built. Okay. Going through this, I guess that there was... Um... Just kind of head through it from the beginning. Uh, well, the first thing that was on sort of my radar um, was the uh, was the parking. Um, that was the thing that looked most most kind of up in the air and and uh, like off off the chart. So, uh, in terms of in the terms of driveways with the twenty foot driveway. Oh, the driveway or the parking? Because they're two different. Okay, I'm in the driveway. Okay. And potential parking on it is what I was thinking. Oh, okay. You know. I was just trying to figure um, out what you were. So I, can, so I can pull up the right thing on here if we want to take a look at it. Right. So this is the uh, driveway. So driveway minimums for the two units would be 24, I think. And you're at 20. Is there your proposal? <clears throat> Say the last thing again. Yeah. So I think I think that the regulations call for 24 foot. Uh -huh. And that you're proposing a 20 foot. Um, I think that there's some, uh, I don't, I'm not sure. I can, if you want me to talk yeah. about it, cause we had a conversation, but I know the technical <laughs> stuff a little more. Um, so this is about the VTrans standards that I put in here. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I've had some conversations with Corey line and, and Jamie and Corey and I will get together. So Corey line is our, our traffic management and road specialist um, for the Department of Public Works. The curb cut, if 
the when the new parcel gets developed, the curb cut for the shared driveway would have to be a minimum of 24 feet because once you go over two dwelling units, you have to apply apply the commercial driveway standards. But that's just for the curb cut. The driveway itself can be narrower and can be 20 feet. Um, but so it, they're just whatever the ultimate easement is for for the the driveway is going to have to take into account that 24 width four foot width curb cut but that wouldn't have to be put in until some development happens on that also there. so i think what i just understood you to say is that if it were for example a single family house put on that that it wouldn't need no it would because it's a shared driveway one driveway oh, serving drive one, one, one curb okay. cut serving three or more residences has to be 24 feet wide at the curb cut right so you know i know i think this happened with a subdivision over on like north street and so it was uh, you know when it got to final there was a requirement that the um curb cut be widened by the existing owner before they sold off the vacant parcel okay um interesting um there's that or just it's a condition of development of right. a new parcel that once once that that step happens the curb cut has to be widened okay so there's options when it gets yeah. to final um and it's just that the the easement will have to take into that into account mm -hmm. so the easement will have to be probably wider for the first however many feet and then it can narrow down up to 20 okay. yep great thank you um <laughs> enough so i think the point is to make sure that people can get out of the road if someone else is coming out right. um, and we'll work with Corey to confirm exactly how far in it has to be wider i don't think it's that far and so and that's definitely that'll something that that will be reviewed once there's a day apply for a new development permit yeah. there right yeah yeah okay um I think that's true. Um, so tra traffic, um, I guess I just don't see that there's, as if we don't need, to, I don't think we need additional information on adding a two unit house there. I don't think it, okay. <laughs> so we can just kind of let that one roll. Um, Does the existing and or the proposed zoning allow uh two equal units without a um with that without an R approval um so the revised zoning regulations that got adopted on April 3rd would actually allow up to six dwelling units on each of these parcels um you, you know, it still has to meet all the other requirements. It has to meet the parking. It has to meet setbacks, setbacks coverage max, all of those things. So I, I honestly, and you know, height limits with this being the zoning district, they would have to be absolutely ridiculously small dwelling units to get six on each of these parcels. And then whoever that is, would probably have to come back to you guys for a parking waiver because our regulations still require one parking space per dwelling unit on the parcel itself, unless they get DRB approval. So even though theoretically the the revised density allowance allows six per parcel, that would be pretty per hard. Per parcel rather than per some, parcel. some dimension. Per size. parcel. Tree houses for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 tree houses. So it's right. it's it's a it's a part of it is Yeah, there's a whole bunch of policy behind it, um, but they're trying to make it so that those parcels that do have the room to meet all the other requirements can do smaller, you know, like um, um, like studios and or one bedrooms, things like that, and f uh, have more variation in housing throughout. But you still have to meet the parking requirements. They didn't get rid of the parking requirements. <laughs> so, um, okay. That is helpful. Um, so the next uh, 
place that I thought there was some question was the applicant shall design the subdivision uh, to provide utility service to each of the parcels and underground if feasible. I mean, that, that whole neighbor's, neighborhood is above ground, right? I mean, everybody's got wires down there, I think. So it doesn't seem like that would be a reasonable thing to ask. It, it would be weird if they went underground just for that property and then back up. So that's more of a long-term community thing, I would think. Um, other thoughts about that? Electrics or utilities or anything? I don't know that we've been 100% consistent, you know, on this. Uh, we've we've definitely said, you know, they could be above ground if they've got across the street. Like we've never required that. Um, okay. Um, you know, I, I think that we'd still be amenable to a waiver for them being underground uh, in this case too. Um, so yeah, I don't see an issue with that. Yeah, and I think that the underground thing oftentimes has to, like we've discussed in new developments, like Isabel Circle. Sure. Yep. Wanted that all underground. Yep. Um, so. um, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just this a vision of the line going like this through neighborhoods. You know? <laughs> I mean, so I guess looking at this, there's a pole on the property. So it's like yeah. whether you attach the pole through, uh, you know, underground drop uh, right. or go straight to it. Like, I don't know whether the one is cheaper than the other, what the power book company is feeling right. this particular, uh, you know, day. Uh, so I don't see the reason for us. Yeah. Like I don't see the reason for us to require it one way or the other. Right. Um, okay. But this, this goes to the whole, this subdivision chapter is still very much geared towards larger subdivision yeah. projects like Isabel circle versus these two parcel subdivisions in already developed neighborhoods. Yeah. This is, we yep. knew that the board has been working with this. Okay. And so yep. revising this wasn't a big push this last round of changes. Um, I guess that, you know, so many of these questions now, the whole screening and, um, thing now, so I feel like we did this up on, um, Gallison Hill Road where it was like hard to tell. I mean, when it seems, this is definitely a bigger subdivision thing. You know, when you were talking about a bigger subdivision, sure. We want to know what's going to be privacy between the houses, between the road frontage, you know, all that, um. You know, between these two small lots in the middle of the meadow. Um, so, you know, I guess if they come back with um, the development proposal, that will that also have the opportunity for them to look at landscaping at that juncture? Or is it only at this point? No, is if they come back, if, if at some point somebody wants to have three dwelling units on either one of these proposed parcels, yeah. That'll trigger site plan review, which triggers the landscaping and screening requirement. Okay. Um, and you know, once you've got people developing there, even if it's just two units, naturally sometimes people want to plant things and figure that out. Yeah. Um, but especially with a shared driveway, it gets much more complicated. So trying to mandate stuff now seems right. difficult. I think what we ended up doing on the Gould Hill was just to say, you know, figure it out. Yeah. whatever works for you guys. Um, and I, I kind of feel comfortable with that approach with a two house subdivision in the middle of the meadow, you know, I mean, you can't get too crazy. <laughs> no. There's an earlier permit for a fence, but that's on the other side of the existing structure. It's on, um, <clears throat> it's on the border of this, the new subdivided lot parcel. <clears throat> so it'll be on the, on the, I guess the east, the east. Hold on, let me help. I can share my screen and pull it up. I would find it on the. Yeah, I don't. It's Could not be... because because it's because the fence hasn't been put up yet. It's not on the survey. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on. Um. Let It'll me... be on the along the. I believe that's ten Vine Street is the house adjacent. Mm -hmm. So there's Vine Street. So which, sorry, it's I can't remember. It's uh, at the bottom, the bottom line. Here. Yep, that's yeah. where the fence will be. That triple hash mark there. Oh. Yep. I have to ask them to move their propane tanks. They're on my property. Right there. <laughs> so yeah, so there'll be a fence along here. 
It's like the propane tanks are just yeah, they're just safe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, they're, oh, they're over. So, yeah, they're just barely over. Well, All right. For, yeah, so, so it's on the record. Yeah, I know this is, um, you just, there have just been these massive zoning changes, so unlikely there's anything else coming up soon, but it's a reminder that, uh, yeah, it is interesting to read these all for like a large scale subdivision versus like a, urban infill small scale project. Yeah. This could be a good change for the future. So it isn't necessary to go through all the discussion around um what's not relevant. Oh yeah. No, we we've yeah. we've got it in the list. We've got it on the list. <laughs> uh, okay. Did other board members have other questions or issues that they wanted to bring up or identify? Not about the parcel division, and the rest will be premature. <laughs> Anybody on our um, online Zoom here have any comments? Yeah, I don't. I think um, I have one com one one question, Meredith. Hi, Brian. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Um, I was just, I think that the what we're seeing are, are parking spaces indicated uh, adjacent to both of these, the existing dwelling and the and the proposed duplex. Is that what those uh, rectangular shapes are? Um, uh, hold on. Let me pull it up on the screen. Yeah. Again. So do you mean here and here? Yes, yes. Yeah, those are my understanding. Those are the, the parking spaces you've got, right? Yes. Jamie, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I, I was just wondering because one of them, I, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a structure and I can see from the hatching on the plan that it isn't. Um, so. Nope, uh, those are, that's the existing, you can see the existing turnarounds in some of the images I put in the, um, like turnaround slash parking spaces that are in the staff report, some yeah. of the satellite images. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, uh, so I think that David Greg and Katie Gustafson are on for the next application. Mm -hmm. I don't know who C Jack is. Could you? Yeah. We finish this one. Yep, I'm just double checking. It looks like you're unmuted. Could you just, are you on for? Yeah, uh, my name's uh, Christopher Ackerman. I live on uh, Kemp Avenue. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, so are, are you on about the um, 35 College Street application? Yes. Okay. Um, That's perfect. So we'll we'll get to you when we get there. I'm just trying to make sure that I know Who's who's who, and who, who, if anybody needed to talk about the application we're discussing right now. So thank you. I would entertain a motion. Okay. Oh, we don't Wait, sketch plan. Oh, I'm so used to it. Like making sure that we get it all done. I'll find it. Well, then we don't have to because it's a sketch plan. Oh, of course. Um, so I think, I mean, unless other people have comments for Jamie, I think we're done. I think it looks good. Process to get to subdivision, so. Yep. Thank you. So we'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks. Well, <laughs> you and I, you and I will discuss, we got to go through the whole public hearing notice process again for the okay. next application. So, um, yeah, we'll discuss either later this week or next week. Um, cause you'll need to split out that the site plan versus the, um, draft plat. Okay. So there'll be a little bit of work for Rick Bell to do. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. Yep. Thank you. See ya. Okay. Bye. Um, moving on to our next applicant. Hi. Hi. Did you state your name for the record? Yes. Kiana Bromley. Kiana Bromley. Okay. Uh, this is a conditional use hearing. So uh, you and anyone else who would like to uh, speak tonight on the record, please raise your right hand. 
uh, helping all of you at home there who are going to speak also are doing that. Um, and do you think, even if you think you might talk to answer a question, I would just raise your hand and get it out of the way to get sworn in. Uh, do you solemn to swear, solemn and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Do Yes, yeah. I do. Okay. <laughs> Everybody good there online? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm just going to go through the applicants. Um, Katie, did you swear in there? Katie, did you have any plans to talk? <laughs> <laughs> If people need me to, I will. I'm I'm trying just to listen and be helpful as I can be. And I did raise my hand and I took the oath. Thank you, Katie. That's a big pie. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I know, you know, Christopher and right. David are both interested in the application. Right, no, that's what I'm, so. so can I just get an affirmative that both of you were sworn in for Christopher Ack Ackerman. Ackerman and David Grape? A, a thumbs up or a nod yes if you swore. Can okay. you hear me? Yes. Hi, yep. David. I'm here mainly to listen. <laughs> Perfect. That's okay. great. That's great. We're just trying to make sure because we know you are interested in the application. And there I am. Oh, hi, Christopher. <laughs> hey, Christopher. So did did you have any intention to talk at all? Did you Not really. Okay. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> I, just, I, mean, it, it, I may be inspired, but just trying to find out but I can. Okay. Super. Sorry to drag that out, but I'd rather be careful. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, we're going to let you do a very quick sketch of this and then we'll turn it over uh, to the applicant. Okay. Um, yeah. So procedurally, this is before the board because it involves some conditional uses um, and I am not allowed to do that um, and make those approvals. So there's a... Um, both a, a restaurant use, there's a, a perform what I call a performance theater use. Um, that's the closest it comes to. And then um, a potential event space that has the actual use name is very long. Um, but think of it as like an event space. So those three uses are sort of layered in on the main floor of the building um, and some in the third floor. Mezzanine. Mezzanine. Yeah. A little partial space up there. Um but then the the ground floor, the bottom floor, is going to continue to be an academic use. It's a, a permitted use up there. It's an existing use. Um, it's just going to change what kind of academic institution it is. Uh, you know, it'd be um, you know, we can jump right into the uh, up to into the application. But I would love to hear just sort of a description about yeah. what you're thinking about doing up there and what you're doing. I got a little thing. Okay. It's okay if I read. I'm just going to read it so I stay on script. Um, hello, and thank you for having me. My name is Kiana Bromley, and I am here today on behalf of the Montpelier Performing Arts Hub. The Montpelier Performing Arts Hub is a 501c3 nonprofit organization with a mission to curate and provide health or high health, <laughs> provide high quality performing arts education for the central Vermont community at a professional performance venue. The organization is under contract to purchase 35 College Street on the Vermont College of Fine Arts campus. The building and the location are a key feature and driving component of our business plan. The building's size and location provide critical advantages and opportunities to meet our mission statement and create a sustainable nonprofit business model. The, as you said before, Meredith, the basement or the lower level will continue to be for education. It will be renovated into an educational suite for performing arts classes. A new and critical entrance will be added to the exterior of the building leading towards the rear par parking lot with complete with a bike storage. Upon entering the reception area will receive students and their families. This area will have ADA and full stalled bathrooms, lockers for students, a shower and seating space. The performing arts educational programming will be for all ages and will run year round out of the four fully equipped studio classrooms. Programming will include hub contracted teaching artists as well as partner organization offerings. Um, yeah, and then so today what we're really seeking is the approval for the change of use in the main floor. The main floor of the Performing Arts Hub at the Gary Library will consist of administrative offices and storage, a cafe and event bar with outdoor deck and seating, a flexible black box theater and event space, 
new ADA and full stalled patron bathrooms, a staff or performer kitchenette, and a technical booth located in the loft, otherwise known as the mezzanine of the of the space looking over the performance space for our technicians. The performance space will include a full ceiling lighting grid with LED stage and architectural lighting, portable and arrangeable riser systems for audience seating and stage arrangements, portable cushioned seating, assistive listening technology combined with professional audio systems, masking curtains and acoustic management, as well as full audio video capabilities to support a wide range of uses. The main floor performance space will support a number of activities, including live music, theater, dance, comedians, speakers, film festivals, private events, educational showcases, and most importantly, community gatherings. The main floor cafe will be open daily to support the flow of class attendees, um, businesses located around the green and the people that go and attend those schools, and other local traffic. Uh, this space is designed specifically to be an added amenity in a strategic way to encourage building access and familiarity. Our cafe will also act as a box office during open hours. Um, and it's our intention to partner with uh, lo local coffee vendors and local um, pastry chefs and bakers to bring in pre-made food. So there's no kitchen um, there. The cafe will double as an event concessions bar this kind of like bar and event concession space, um, it will operate and like, it'll be a complement to events held in the performance space. Therefore, it will be open when events happen at the time of the performances and around those hours, but not separately. So it's really designed to be a complementary service to the event. Um, we are seeking a change of use um, at today's meeting and our building permits will be submitted later. So we don't, we're not submitting our building permit for review today. And then I just wanted to address a couple of the notes in the, the document already, just to put yeah. those in there. So deliveries for our cafe space and for anything like that will be made to the back of the building where we're putting in a new entrance. So it's not, we don't currently have an entrance in the back, um, but that is where we're, that, that door in the back that would have clearance um, and would have an off street site for deliveries. And again, kind of looking at the model of the cafe, we're working with local vendors. So our, the size truck that we're expecting is, a single truck or or smaller, probably vans, cars will also be the delivery method for most items coming into the into the theater or into the space as a whole. And the outdoor deck and patio space, the patio will be the main entrance space for the building and for the events on the top floor. Although the exterior entrance on the back is an encouraged entrance um, as well. There's a we have a proposed elevator that will link the basement entrance by the back parking lot for like safe and convenient parking and hopefully hopefully driving more traffic towards parking in the parking lot that's back there instead of on the street, which I, I think is what kind of currently happens. Um, and so those, what was I just saying, sorry. Um, oh, and just about the patio in the front. So that is an entrance spot, but the seating on the patio is not in, is intended for cafe use, not necessarily, not for the event and uh, evening use. So uh, I, we just noticed that there was a, a talk about the patio kind of being open in the evening, like at nighttime, and that was not, um, that's not our intent for that space. The patio is really, the seating for that complements the cafe hours. Um, and then, but the deck is used as an entrance location for the office, like the box office space where it becomes in the evening for our events. Um, in terms of the refuse area, we have, um, we're proposing a, placing a smaller refuse area near our building so that there's something easy to access. And I just wanted to note that we will provide a site plan update, but haven't yet, but we will do that shortly. And then the other piece I just wanted to kind of push in, or I just wanted to like point out more, I guess, um, was just regarding noise, just recognizing the neighborhood and, and how concerned folks are about the noise that um, we're working with our local theater designer, Don Hirsch, who's in incredibly um, experienced and really looking at the design of the space to include noise barriers, you know, sound masking, and really thinking strategically about the space so that we are containing and controlling our, like the sound and the impact of our events to our space and designing it appropriately for that. So that is something that we are working with a professional on um, specifically for that purpose. And so, yeah, that's my little spiel. Thank you. And I look forward to answering your questions. <laughs> Um, I guess one, can you just review what you said about the um, patio? Yeah. Because I thought you said the cafe was going to be open during events and that so, the patio would only be open when the cafe is open. And then somehow that didn't. Yeah, somehow often, that doesn't line up. So yeah. I see they're, they're, they're kind of like 
they're, they're the same space, but they offer two different services really. So like the, the cafe in the cafe hours will be, uh, I don't know exactly the hours it'll end up being, but it's daytime, you know, it's daytime use. Um, it'll probably cross over into the early afternoon, just along with the classes in the basement to support the flow of people in the building. <laughs> but when it, when that space um, transitions into like a con an event concessions bar, mm -hmm. right, is really here we have an event. It starts at seven. The cafe, you know, the the space opens at six thirty or six fifteen prior to the event, and during that transition, that space has a little bit of a. You can I imagine when I walk into that space that there's actually it changes like we move tables aside and it's more of a lobby entrance space where you get your ticket. You have a box office point of sale right there at the counter. Right. You see a little bit of a different array of what's offered. It's not the full cafe offerings. Right. Right. And so when I see those two, there's like the cafe hours that are regular business hours. And then there are events with the, you know, with the event um, bar concession space. Like supporting that, but the outdoor seating is not like a component of that. It's not a component of that. I mean, so it's, a... it's like not a, I don't, may, I, I, like I don't know why people would be out there because it would be dark. <laughs> like I'm just like, no, like, no, no light is good. <laughs> I mean, they're going to enter through there. They'll be, it'll be well lit enough to, you know, of course, based on review to make sure that people are safe entering right. the building, but the space is not an outdoor evening patio space. It's okay. really that was, my, that was my question. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't I know. felt like uh, that. Yeah, I wanted to uh, see okay. if that could be clarified myself. Oh, okay. uh, well, who are you? I'm sorry, I didn't follow the protocol, I guess. Did you have a question? I wanted to know how late um, things might go on. Okay. Can you? In the evening. Okay, thank you. Can you like in terms question? of event, like ending times. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. I cannot imagine a scenario in which they would ever go later than midnight as like the latest, latest. But that is not the zone oh. we would be looking for um, to end. Like, I, I would imagine most people, including myself, like to go home in the evening in this area. <laughs> um, so I'm much more imagining, you know, performances starting at seven. <laughs> Or eight and being done, you know, after nine, nine. You know. So I, th I think there's a variety of scenarios. I don't, um, I don't have the ability to, I think, to like promise a certain end time. Like, but does that make sense? Like I, right. I, I, the right. typical application will be a seven o'clock performance, 730 performance, eight, like just kind of a very typical time that you would see other events out in the, in the area. Um, it's not designed again. We're not opening a bar to be like a late night space that you come to um, just for bar use. You know, you'd be seeing something very specific and then the, the show would be over and you would go home. And is there going to be a bar in there? Sure, you, well, we just got to um, we just got to keep this. We can't just have an open conversation. So it's yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't know how to uh, I mean, raise my hand on <laughs> See you. See you. So, and like, they'll be wave your hand and I, and we can tell. Yeah, we. Did, oh, okay. And we'll be able to see you. Um, usually, okay. Okay. the board members ask a bunch of questions first, and then the chair will ask members of the public. Got it. Pipe, pipe, pipe okay. in some questions that haven't been answered yet. Just in the hopes that we can get most of the questions answered this way. Kevin, go ahead. The question, and maybe you could restate it again. Yeah. Uh, if the Barry Opera House is a is a uh, useful comparison. Yeah, I would use any of our you know performing arts centers across Vermont as an example of season timeline and starting. So Barry Opera House would be our local space. I mean, obviously it's a much larger space, but in terms of the in terms of the times of performances and and things like that, yeah. So am I right in understanding that there is one main space that is a multi-use space that probably now holds the stacks? Correct. Okay. Um, it doesn't, there's currently no stacks in the center. They're all around the outside, but there's this beautiful, it's like about 50 feet by 25 foot room. So and that's the room for the, the event. Capacity for that um, we have not had a fire marshal through for that specific application. Um, 
And if we have, I cannot I'm see if anyone remembers if we have. I'm looking around at my friend. I mean, Michelle, but, Michelle yeah. will give you that capacity. I can't remember what she yeah. said it was, though, what the building inspector said yeah. it. The it's capacity is significantly it's... lower than um, Alumni Hall down the street, which is also an event space on the same campus. Um, That's the modern cube. Uh, no, it's no, the really I, large one at the end with the columns. I've yeah. the events on the side. Beautiful floor. space. There. Um, yeah. Can hold a, more than double than this space. So in terms of size, it is a smaller venue size. Um, we are looking at, and this is will definitely below, be below our um, fire marshal number, but our seated capacity on our riser systems will be 97, um, an audience of 97. And then when we're standing, our seated size, we're looking, that's where we need the fire marshal, like the standing piece, but it'll be like 150 to 200 would be in the standing, like standing room only kind right. of setting. And that would be the absolute maximum that we could have. It's interesting that um, it's, that uh, space is double or it's half the size of alumni hall. I think that kind of adds a nice perspective to it of like, I mean, you guys have seen the inside of that space relatively recently. I mean, it's very pretty. It's nice. Um, and it's not huge. No, it's not gigantic. And it, yeah. it's, you know, I think this size venue is uh, what's really needed in the, I mean, if I want to go on my business pitch, like it's really needed. We are a small community and we have a variety of wonderful performers, but not all of our performers draw crowds of uh, 600 to fill the very opera house or, or some of ours pull more than 50 and they can't crowd into a local bar downtown um, and they want to see. So there's, it's a kind of like a mid size, like small, but um, appropriately sized for our community performance space to hold all of our local, we, we really are looking at like a lot of partnerships with our local um, organizations and companies and, and groups that already are collecting and creating work that we want to watch. Okay. I guess, uh, I mean, my my thing that I was worried about most about with that um, was the outdoor patio used yeah. at night. I mean, that just sounded like that had the potential to be very loud. Yeah. And I, it's funny. I hadn't even, when I read it, I was like, oh, I didn't even, it, it's not in my, our picture to right, have that nearby. in an area yeah. of like, like evening outdoor engagement. Like right. it's really a patio to enter and have a view of the green, right. have a place to sit and drink your coffee. Um, yeah. Right. And to have that entrance location that's like accessible and and helps bring us towards that side of the building um the deck helps expand into kind of a critical space to kind of where we need people to flow into the space that to have it work really function really well so super yeah other questions um i guess somebody was that you wakeling kevin <laughs> <laughs> just checking uh, Good peripheral okay. vision. Uh, I, yeah, Catherine. Yeah, and I may not use the correct terminology because it's I'm blanking on it. But can you speak a bit about any coordination with the the condo association, yeah. a parking lot sharing, or other coordination you've begun thinking about? Yeah, I mean, I can only talk in the like this will. Um, I'm not a part of the yeah, association yet. Um, so if we need anyone else to speak up that is, please let us know. But um, I have already had lovely conversations with all of the main contenders of that parcel, and that will be a part of the homeowners association. And I'm really excited about all of the synergies that we're finding between our spaces. Um, but one thing that we do, we just like know is that luck, like our use um, in our hours, particularly for the events, sit kind of outside of the general hours of of the main activity of those other spaces. And so that allows some super flexibility to, to, to be able to say, you know, even though there are enough spaces within the parcel for us, we can even access the additional spaces that are unused during the times that we, where those businesses are in, in lower hours or off peak moments of their business. So I think there is goodwill and good conversation starting. And then we would absolutely be working together as a HOA collectively to talk about, of you know, the use of the spaces. And um, I would very much imagine that if Alumni Hall were to host an event, that that would be a part of a conversation between both of us, right, about the use of all those shared spark parking spaces and how we would line those events up to be, you know, to use those spaces appropriately. Okay. Um, I guess... 
uh, the parking, I mean, it, it certainly sounds like you have sufficient parking. Um, and I think it's good that you're trying to encourage people to park in the back. I think that would be really helpful. Um, and I don't, I don't really know that it's where to put this in here, but one, I know when we've thought about other uses on this property, that there was a uh, conversation about reversing that one way direction. Um, and, and, you know, uh, that where you only enter and down by alumni hall, and then you can only leave down here at this end and, and whether that should be changed. And I don't really have an opinion about that, but it seems like if you're drawing, trying to draw more people to that end of it, that it might be something to consider. And that is all that is. So that's just, that's a note, you yeah. know, assuming everything works out, you take that back to the condo association. Yeah. We've mentioned it to a few different people along the way. Um, and I do know that the Department of Public Works, I think, if I remember correctly, they were fine with that, what's currently the exit only becoming an entrance only. The key thing is it has to be one-way traffic. It's too narrow it's to have two-way two, tra yeah. traffic there. So it either has to be an entrance or an exit. Um, but when they were looking at, at how the traffic flow was, I think last time this was reviewed, they were okay either way. Okay. Um, but it is something to think about when you're talking to to other people who use the parcel. Do any other board members have any other questions before I open this up to people of the public? Okay. Uh, Christopher. Uh, you have some questions? You. Uh, I'm just trying to get clear on, you talked about the, the back entrance, I think, and patio. And so I'm, I'm basically it's right behind our property here, uh, that part of uh, the college. And uh, so it's very close. And I'm just trying to get a clear take on whether there will be people out there. Um, it, it, are there, is there going to be a bar? I, I just couldn't quite get all that. So, Christopher, do you can you see the share screen that I just put up on the? Yes, on... yes. So, do you mind if I yeah do a little bit here Absolutely. and then? So, this is the floor plans. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm going to go to the main level here. So, this is the current entrance to the library, right? Okay. And this is where they're proposing to put in sort of a patio slash very low deck space that would be one of the main, you know, foot traffic entrances to get into the um, cafe or during events to come in, come in here to get their tickets, um, you know, maybe a, a drink or something, and then go in here into the event space. There's an Okay, so it's in the front, the patio. The patio, yeah, the patio is in the front, right? And and as Kiana just said, if for evening events, this would really be a place so that people can sort of get off the sidewalk and get up here to then get in. Sure. But then there's also going to be a rear entrance that comes in on the ground level where people can take an elevator up to here because they need to have uh, an elevator in the building for life and safety reasons. Mm. So this is down here is that, lower ground level slash basement space where the classrooms are. And that's where you would get in from the back to access the elevator. Cause for life and safety reasons, they have to have um, various fire code safety exits. So here's a, a ground floor walk-in space, right? To then get over and around into the elevator. So sure. there'll be a new entrance here because they have to, to be able to have enough entrances to be able to use this space and bring it up to code. Okay, thank you. And Chris, um, one thing that I think I did use the word patio, the architect sees the word patio for that like slab that's there. I'm like, uh -huh. just like the walkway in like walking out. Oh, I see, I get it, yeah like amenities out like it's you know it's just an entrance right? I so i can't imagine it other than maybe in a you know some kids waiting for a ride um you know from class as a pickup for their parents i, I can't imagine it's going to be a large gathering space <laughs> i don't know i mean well, the so there's no reason nice. for there to be people hanging there unless right. they're the canopy might be nice actually in both entrances yeah 
rain. The rain, yeah, yeah somewhere you can wait for a ride out. safely. But it will really mainly be, I mean, the, the exterior entrance, I do hope will encourage people to park and enter for events, just ex particularly anyone that needs um, wheelchair access because it will be kind of the easiest way. Um, mm -hmm. So I am hoping that it becomes a more accessible location for those that need handicap accessibility to park. But I do think that for most most people are going to be entering from the front of the building for performances. Um, but, you know, again, I'm like, I think I'm hoping some traffic will go and park behind as they already do, but it'll be a little bit more accessible because there's an entrance back there, but then there will continue to be a significant number of people that park, you know, on the front side, on the, on the green side, on the side that looks, you know, pretty okay. attractive. That's good. Um, did we have anyone else out there that wanted to ask a question? Yes. Hi, David. Go ahead. Hi. So I'm David Gregg, and I was wondering if, we, Meredith, could you, it would be very helpful if you could put up what I believe is page 51 of 73 of your packet. It shows the buildings with numbers and the parking spaces. Is there any way you could put that up on the screen, please? Give me just a minute. Sure. Um, so the, the shared parking plan? Yeah, I think that's what it's, I'm not sure that's what it's called, but it is the shared parking plan. Sure. It's a, I just it's wanted to buildings, it's page. I got it. I just wanted to scroll there separately so I don't yep. give people motion sickness. Sure. Yeah, and if if we could take take a look at the site plan, the 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 aerial view, that would be very helpful. Great, yeah. thank you. So the first thing I would just want to understand is when you talk about accessing vehicular access to the back of what you'll be, which is you're you're going to be what building seven? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so when you talk about vehicular access to Building 7, where do you anticipate that the vehicles will enter the parking area by which they will reach the back of your building? So I, I think that we just addressed that. I think that currently right now they would come in on that College Street corner um, and then go down behind there. Um, but there was also talk in the future, and the public works department was okay with it, of changing that so that they come in at this end and go out um, by College Street. And this will always be both in and out, yeah. College Street side. Um, okay. So if, 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 could, I, could we just go a little slower? Sorry. If we could just go a little slower. So if we could go back to where the little hand was at the intersection, and then if, if we could put the hand back to, to, where the first inter the the ingress and egress point of I'm gonna zoom in College Street and East State. In College Street and East State, I can get yes. So so <laughs> right yeah. Just if you could just put on the first access point that the chair I believe was saying had already been addressed. I think if we give it a name or a number, it'll help our conversation. So if you could put your hand, see where East State Street uh, actually, right there, perfect. So if we could just, for the purposes of our conversation tonight, just call that the access point one, okay? And then the other access point on the opposite side of that island, right? If you go, if you follow the red line up to right there, exactly. That would be access point two. I think that would help our conversation. So our experience is that by and large, traffic will enter and exit onto college via access point one. And I'm assuming that's going to be the basis of the operation for the for the arts facility, yes? I guess I I, uh, I don't feel like that has been specifically determined in this case, and it's not. Um, I I don't see uh, that has traditionally been access to all of the buildings there, and I don't see why that would change in this instance. Well, fair enough, but I still would like to explore the use of it in concurrent with this application, 
It's relevant to parking, traffic circulation, and it will lead us to the discussion of character the area. Is that okay? If we can be brief, yes. Well, I'm going to exercise my rights so that hopefully we can resolve issues this evening. It would be truly unfortunate if in an attempt to expedite this matter, it ends up actually slowing it down. So if we could, I'm just trying to understand that access point one is going to be used by delivery vehicles and to the extent that patrons come and go in the evening, my expectation is that if they're parking in back, they'll certainly enter via access point one. And in the present scheme, they could exit via the one-way exit down at building seven, but that if people are parking down adjacent to building 11, then they might choose to depart from that area. That all makes sense to me. I'm just trying to understand if that's the expectation. Yes? Is it, I'm sorry, is there a question there? I mean, I think I- Yes, there is a question. I'll ask it again. It's, I want to know if the expected traffic pattern by the patrons of this facility will be entry via access point one, departure via the one way access via point seven, or if people are parking down adjacent to building 11 or behind building 10 even, there's a reasonable expectation that some of that traffic is going to both enter the parking area and depart through access point one. Is that a fair assumption? Uh, yes, David, I think that under free will of parking habits of people that we can assume that people will make their choices. But I also think that it is true to assume that like the events happening that are currently happening in number seven and on the other places in our parcel and on campus, that the parking traffic would be very similar as is, as is to it is right now in the sense that the okay. people access the space would be the our, our community currently accesses and maneuvers through those Basically. parking. Right. So now let's lock, let's talk about the timing of those movements relative to your evening performances. Do you think patrons to your evening performances, which I think you said won't normally go past 9 or 9.30, but which could go as late as midnight, do you think that some of those people are going to be parking adjacent to Building 11 in that area where the hand is right now? Similar to those events that happen at Alumni Hall that I attend throughout the year? Yes. Okay, so there's going to be some increase relative to your performances. You'd like to think that they're going to end at 9 or 9.30, but you would like the flexibility to have a cutoff date as a permit condition. Um, I think I'm hearing you say you want to go as late as midnight, or am I wrong? Would you agree to a permit condition of, let's say, your performances end at 11? David, I could, could I just remind you that you need to address the board and that you're not um, actually the, the way it works is you don't ad directly address the applicant. Um, just to well, of... consider me to be addressing the board, but the information I need is from the applicant. So I would encourage this free flowing conversation and sharing of information, which is just explain to me what are the impacts that we can expect to experience. That's all I'm trying to find out. Okay. So if you can address those questions to us, we'll make sure that the applicant addresses them. I think that I just have a question before us go even further. Right? Um, so we have a current traffic plan for the college. Uh, not Wait, traffic. Who's speaking? who's speaking? Wait. There's current like operations of signage and, uh, you know, someone's going to go use a building. Uh, there's a current plan. So I guess... I'm not all down to have this discussion until midnight, but uh, I, maybe you could enlighten the board on sort of how you see the changes that are being proposed here really changing the current sort of use and traffic in the, in the college. I haven't really made that connection myself, so maybe maybe you're maybe I'm missing something. 
Well, I'm trying to find out the traffic. I'm trying to find out the impacts. That's that's my whole point. I'd like to know when, how will the parking area adjacent to Alumni Hall be used and under what circumstances relative to the performances and activities at Building 7? That park, and, 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 and beyond that, I'm also going to want to know to what extent will the proposed use of this application make use of the parking spaces which are the subject of a court order to which the city of Montpelier is a party, which I believe this application potentially is trying to override. And I don't believe the Development Review Board of the city of Montpelier has the authority to amend a court David, order. David, I, I, I have to say that I really feel that um, if the city agreed with you, that we would have been informed by the city's attorney not to do anything. And we have not. So I'm going to presume that we are OK to go forward. Um, I think. Well, it's that's fine, but you'll end up in a lawsuit if you pursue that in that manner. So I'm going to continue to ask my questions so that when this goes to court, and I have to explain why the city has caused an appeal, I will be able to identify the refusal of this board to allow me to ask some very simple questions, which if you would just yeah. let me ask, we could finish up expeditiously. But if you're going to prevent me from doing so, you are guaranteeing that there will have to be an appeal. And I'm doing my best to avoid that. So could I please just ask some questions to the applicant, get some information out on the table, and then we can be done with it. Okay, um, you are asked to address the, the questions to the board. That is the procedure that we use. Oh, I'm gonna say the questions and I anticipate the applicant will say the answer, okay? Do you wanna do it that way or not? Because you're just gonna guarantee an appeal. And I, I don't understand why you're being so obstinate. It's ridiculous. There's a process that we use here. Um, it's it's not a willy nilly thing that I came up with on my way here. I mean, this is something well, and that we- Whatever, uh, I'm just telling you, you're gonna, you're, the sole result of what you're doing is gonna be an appeal. And I feel really bad for the applicant that I you're know. insisting on forcing an appeal when there's some very simple information. So I'm not gonna argue it over it anymore. I want to ask questions. You're not going to let me ask questions? Applicant, I'm sorry, but there's going to be an appeal. It's really regrettable. It could yeah. be avoided. David, I would ask that you ask the questions and that the board will talk about it and that the applicant will answer if we ask her to. Please feel free to ask your questions now. I'm asking the question, will the parking spaces that are the subject of Docket number 1591216 VTEC, entry order on February 9th, 2017, be used as part of the proposed project, which is here before us this evening. Yes or no? Um, if you need to come up to the podium if you want to talk, are you, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm super great. Okay. I don't want to barge into Oh, the, no, 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 you're just your name and yeah, I address. I okay. <laughs> okay, so can you just say, state your name for the I'm record, please? The other. I'm with JL Davis Realty. I'm assisting the college in the sale of the property and a real estate okay. advisor. Um, in answer to the, the person state his name, please. I did. He did. Um, was that can I hear it again? Okay, you want, it, it, did you hear him at all, David? No, could I just hear his name again? Jeff Nick, uh, we've met before. I'm oh, hi, Jeff. How you doing? Jeff, right. have you been sworn in? Did yeah. you swear yourself in? Thank you. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. My thought is human nature tells us that when there's an event here, the people will seek the closest parking space to that front door. And so my guess is the parking lot Dave is concerned about will be the least used. And they're going to have on street parking. There's parking across the street around College Hall. People will find the closest parking spaces to this front door. That's my thought. That might help. Or the rear. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, it is all shared parking so that there's an agreement within the condo association that it's shared parking. The hours that we're talking about here for the, for the library, for your, your use. 
that's going to be the kind of the off peak hours. So the parking spaces will be freed up closest to the event. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's noted in the shared parking plan that Harris Hall's parking spaces are deeded spaces. So I don't know how that's reflected in the condo association documents, but I'm sure that's in the condo association documents somewhere as to which those, which, which spaces are deeded. Okay. If deeded, they're going to be. Harris Hall does have the use of the 28 right. spaces right. closest to their front. Right. Door. So those, those yeah. are part of the deed that's part incorporated is my understanding in the condo association plan. So how they, how the rest of those spaces are organized right. isn't necessarily the board's as long as there's enough space. For the yeah, they've already approved the parking plan up there. Yeah. The parking plan is approved. Um, there's similar usage in Alumni Hall. There's, you know, I mean, that that's, um, I, I don't see where we, we have a lot of room to require more than what they're putting forward. I mean, if, if at some point the condo association comes to us with reorganizing parking, adding more parking, changing the way it flows, then you know, that might come before the board again as a major site plan, but. Great. Hey, did you right. have so I'd still like my question answered. Does the proposed use make use of the 28 spaces, which Jeff just discussed? It's a simple yes or no answer. Does it potentially make use of those spaces? Yes or no? David, one of the board members is trying to talk to you. Yeah, David, I don't think we got a full introduction. Like, who are you representing and whatnot? Oh, no, he submitted he submitted testimony. Yeah. It's all been filed. It's all been filed. I would like, and now I'm convinced you haven't read what I filed, which is a little disappointing. Because if you had read it, you wouldn't have asked that question. So, so um, again, so I'm still trying to understand, will the parking for activities at this project make use of potentially the 28 spaces which Jeff just spoke about. So I don't feel like anybody on this board is going to answer your question about uh, the 2017 uh, court determination. Um, I'm asking the applicant the Vermont College of Fine Arts. If you don't answer my questions, you're going to get an appeal. This is really stupid. I don't know why you're behaving this way. Could someone I, please just answer my question? If you don't want to answer it, you'll get an appeal, and you'll be the reason for it. Do you want to move on or not? You need to you know? your tongue. It's, it's, Just stop. Yeah, I, I, David, David, but, you need to speak with civility. I am speaking with civility. You're treating me a neighbor who's put up with a lot from the college, who has done a lot for this college, who's had people smash into their buildings. We've had stormwater dumped on us. We've had snow dumped on us. We've had illegal activity. We've testified so that Alumni Hall could get its Act 250 permit and get past historic preservation. And all I'm trying to find out is, are we going to experience people going to and from their cars at midnight making noise so that the young boy who lives in 57 College Street can get a decent night's sleep to get up to go to school? That's all I'm trying to find out. And you don't want to answer those questions? Fine, we'll see you in court. If I can again, just this all shared parking, but those will be the last parking spaces that will be used. Um, I doubt very much it'll be midnight events. You know, and this board has the ability to condition and put our limits on the events that you can do. Um, so you know, it is all for parking, but human nature says that very few people will be parking in that northern lot. Right. They're not okay. So what you're saying is, yes, they might be parking there, which is fine. If that's your answer, that's your answer. Those are the facts. And in terms of a limit on hours of operation, that is a reasonable condition. And I think the time, the cutoff time should be all events are over by 11 p.m. And I want to know if the applicant would agree to that. All right. Thank you very much. That's an interesting question. Um, I don't... Well, I'd like an answer to it. I'm entitled to ask the applicant questions. You are not allowed to prevent me from doing that. You're violating the Administrative Procedure Act, and you are guaranteeing an appeal. 
So I urge you to stop it and allow the applicant to answer very simple questions. We are getting there. We have a process. We are getting there. Your question will not go unanswered one way or the other, but we have a process, okay? I have just put your question in front of the board to get the board's feedback on that, and then I will check with the applicant. You will get an answer to that question, okay? Great. I have more questions. Thank you. I have more questions. Uh, board members, how do, you, how do we feel about it? 11 o'clock, do we feel like? Uh, I would like to ask how 11 o'clock, uh, how that time was determined. Oh, Joe, hold on, Joe. Kevin was talking. Kevin, make sure you put your microphone. Kevin. Hold on one second, Joe. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, dismayed at the lack of civility that's being exhibited by the uh, uh, by the neighbor in this instance. And Yeah, I'm dismayed by you. So it's mutual. Continue. You're just guaranteeing an appeal. So get off your high horse and let's get on with it. Um, Madam Chair, I suggest that we continue. Okay, Joe, you had something to say? Yeah, I was wondering if there was any reason for picking 11 p.m., what the reasoning is behind that time. I think it's a fair compromise between allowing events to happen and acknowledging that past 11 p.m., the neighborhood needs a certain amount of quiet. So from 11 p.m. on, on occasion, Alumni Hall, like four or five times a year, sometimes has gone as late as one o'clock in the morning. It's a bit much when it goes to one o'clock in the morning, but we know it's gonna happen when they have some really big events there. But as a general matter, I think 11 p.m. is a reasonable compromise between the character of the area, as well as the need for the venue to be successful. Okay. And if there was gonna be a need for more than 11 p.m., I'd like to hear about it. And if there's gonna be a need for more than 11 p.m., I'd like to hear about what the applicant proposes to do Even to, to regulate and modulate the impacts as people are departing from the event. David, I need, so, I need you to either respond when I start talking or I need you to get offline because it just, it, this isn't working. Well, I thought Joe was asking me the question, but maybe he wasn't. The applicant has expressed a desire to speak. Please let her do so. Thank you, David. I also have small children and, and completely appreciate the concern that you have for your, you know, your neighborhood being quiet. So I, I just want to say like person to person, I, I think this is a really important concern that you're bringing forward. I am okay. And I just needed to, I'm just also figuring out the process. So just trying to figure out looking who I'm supposed to, do, when am I supposed to talk? So I apologize, but I, I would be agreeable to putting a cap at 11 PM for the end of performances and events for the space. I think that's a reasonable time. I think that's, it won't even go that late most of the time, but I think having that as like a borderline is a fair piece for the neighborhood. And um, so I would be comfortable with that. And I think it's a valid concern. So um, I would, in terms of ways to, I think it would be really good to to uh, work with my advisory council and other stakeholders in the neighborhood and um, to think about ways that we can encourage you know, parking down at that area. I think there's a lot of signage we can do, whether it's performing arts spaces. I do agree that whenever I go to the library, I definitely park towards college hall side, just, but that's again, me and maybe human nature. But um, I do think there are a lot of things that we can be proactive about in, in doing that. And I think based on the numbers and the size of the venue that we'll be seeing a lot, like the traffic flow won't be the, the number of people isn't going to be exorbitant that where we need to flow into every, we won't fill all the spaces in the back parking lot. Um, everyone would have to come in their own car. No one would have to walk and, you know, and more to even reach the capacity of the, the back parking lot and no one would park on the street. So I think like in terms of numbers and ending at 11 and that, I think we can do a, a really good job managing the sound. I, I know I, our this space, and I'm just going to say this for you, David, but like this space is not designed to be, um, a wild and crazy space. This is the community space. I mean, our partners and the people we're bringing in are folk musicians, they're chamber choirs, they're a local artist. Um, there's a theater group. There's the, some of the showcases that are, most of the showcases that are happening are coming out of our educational programming. So it's kids theater. And, um, you know, I just think in terms of like what this building is and what we're trying to propose and our mission is 
less of what I think is being described as this like wild concert venue with drunk people everywhere. And, and that's not what we're, I mean, there might be a single night like at alumni hall where we do have a band where people are, you know, enjoying themselves adults together in our community together, which would be amazing. I'm an adult in this community. Um, but I, that is not the main purpose of the event, nor will it be the primary season material and the content of what we're offering. So, I mean, I think just to assure you as like someone that lives right there, like this, this should be a beautiful thing in that neighborhood. It should, you know, it should be producing really wonderful ways for the community that lives in walking distance to connect and have access to art. It sounds like so. a very good thing. So I, I just want to say thank you for your concerns. And I'm sorry, I haven't just butted in, but I'm, I'm also just figuring it out. So so think, thank you. I think uh, it, it sounds like you're okay with the 11 o'clock. I'm okay o'clock. with 11 o'clock. I don't think anybody think on the board reasonable. has any problem with 11 o'clock. So we'll alter that on the application. Sure. Okay. Does that work, David? Kiana, thank you. Kiana, I appreciate you hearing me out and understanding that I know your intentions are wonderful and I wish you all the success. I can tell you from having observed over the years that people will behave the way people behave and there will be instances where people will misbehave and that's okay as long as you're responsive to those instances and realize that we have a shared usage which requires a balancing of everyone's interests, which is to enjoy their properties and also get a good night's sleep. So 11 p.m. is great. That will take care of a lot of issues. And I really appreciate you agreeing to that as a condition of your approval. Of course. Thank you, David. Do you have other questions? Um, I'm pretty sure that with the 11 p.m., that's pretty much going to take care of it. I mean, I I really appreciate that you've agreed to that, and and I don't even mind if you want, you know, to have permission, you know, for four Saturday night events going till midnight. You know, if you want to if you want to propose a number like that, but on Saturday nights, not not during the week. Not Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> right, not 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 Wednesday. But if you you know if you wanted to go to midnight, when they would have the school graduation parties, they'd rock out till one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you want to think about if you want to think about that, you're not going to get any objection if you want four Saturdays a year until midnight. I, I um, the other thing that I'm unclear about is, is your organization buying the building or are you in a going to have a lease agreement? Great question. Uh, we will be, sorry, I know we're avoiding, uh, uh, we'll be buying the building. Our goal is to purchase the building, David. Okay. So you're going to end up, you're going to end up being the owner of that. And then you've made mention of a homeowners association. I'm sorry. You, you, this is, you, we just have to use the process. I'm going to say it one more time. I need you to address questions to the board. I need the board to be able to respond to them if they want to, and then things will go to the applicant. I appreciate your flexibility. I'm glad you came up with a solution at 11. That sounds great. I appreciate your flexibility to consider other options, but that's not really your job. Um, are there other... Well, it's, it's not your job to violate the law, what you're doing, but okay, fair enough. If there needs to be an appeal, there will be an appeal. I'm trying to avoid that. You're trying to make it happen, which I find quite incredible. But whatever, I, I just I'm not going to fight. I'm, I'm telling. Consider my questions being addressed to the board. Board, will you be buying this property, or do you know if the applicant's buying this property or not? I think the applicant just answered it. But do you want to answer it? Okay. I've heard mention of of a condominium owners association. Are they part of the project? Are they a co-applicant? I see the college is listed as the property owner. David, can, can you hold on one second? Just so I'm the zoning administrator. I just want to put this out here. Um, so right now for everybody here, Kiana is representing the applicant who is asking for the change of use. Right now, Vermont College of Fine Arts owns the building. 
That is the relevant information. We have the permission of both of these those entities on this application. Um, there is, my understanding is there is a condo association that owns the land underlying everything right now, um, but that's not really relevant to the application right now. Um, really, Meredith? Because Judge Walsh has ruled that that permits issued under Title 24, Chapter 117 run with the land. So I think you're talking about issuing a permit, which is going to run with the land, but yet you're telling me that the owner of the land is not an applicant. I think you're setting up, a, I think you're setting up reversible error. Do you want to go down that road? Do you want to go down that road? David. Do you want me to cite to the case? Do you want me to read it to you? David, no, we don't. Um, I, I, you can't just keep running over somebody when um when they're talking to you. It's just it's just not how it's done. It's very hard to it's very hard to communicate. It's very hard to make communications work if you when you only hear as much as you want to hear, then you start to talk and not let to finish. Yeah, well, you're just pontificating and it's kind of boring. So let's move on, okay? I'm telling you, you're committing reversible error. You're forcing an appeal. This permit will run with the land. You need to have the landowner as part of this process. If you don't, you're forcing an appeal. I don't need to say it again. Do it. I dare you. Do it. I dare you. Um, board members, I'd like to just have a little discussion about this, if we could. I mean, where's where's the cutoff on on whether people listen or don't listen and how we take testimony? I think we're at the point where we can say we have we have solicited and received public comment, and we're just going around in circles at this point and close the public hearing. Uh, other thoughts? I mean, are there other, can, are there any other, well, yeah, but does everybody have the information that they need to make the to answer all the items to the boards? That's the, I don't yeah, close the public hearing until that's sure. confirmed. I'm feeling, I'm feeling that there's a lot of tension between David and the board, but I am feeling like I could answer David's questions and maybe satisfy and, and, and get them answered. So if, if we were willing to sus just allow him to address, I won't answer if I can't, but could I, could I answer his question about? No. Not something okay. that I okay. a civic organization yeah. tolerate. Right. I, I am totally in agreement with that. I mean, we, we, we can put up with a certain amount of disruption. Nobody's going to block at that. But if we get into uh, okay. uh, threats from whatever person or from whatever direction, okay. we're overstepping. I think that if there's, a, there's a need for direct back and forth between the applicant and an interested party, I think the best place for that is sort of outside of this venue okay. right? Uh, and maybe, you know, coming to, uh, uh, you know, revisions to the application to be presented uh, and we would continue, you know, this this evening. Um, but um, maybe I'm wrong. If the, well, no, but that's if the board members feel like they don't have enough information right. to address it, right? If the board has questions. Right. I guess that was my response to if the applicant wishes to engage with uh, a concerned citizen oh, on the what's, if, what's going what's going on that um, that could be our yeah. best pass, path forward. May I ask a question about the appeal process? Sure. Um, for a nonprofit that is desperately trying to raise enough money to make this community asset happen in a short period of time, what does that appeal process do to our ability to pull that off and to our ability to pay for the lawyer to defend our side of this yeah. when it doesn't feel like an argument between the Montpelier Performing Arts Hub it feels a little bit more like a, an, a, 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 I don't know I'm just trying, yeah. trying to figure out where an unfortunate dichotomy between the board and that con person on yeah I just I'm just trying to figure so that out because I that's where I am right that the way forward is to continue this hearing for to the next meeting and if you want to engage with the um, member of the Interested public member. who is mm -hmm. um, causing this difficulty, um, then you can and you can amend your um, proposal. If needed. If okay. Needed. So I'd like to have just one more shot at this, David. I think that it sounds like the compromise that was made regarding the 11 o'clock was helpful to you and that that was really the most important thing for you to think about. Um, I, 
you know, I, I've heard your other concerns. I feel like that we've all listened pretty effectively. Uh, is there some further related question to this that you could be brief and that we could convey or let the applicant respond to? Yes. I want to know who is the owner of land which will be used as part of this proposal? Because in Hannaford subdivision revision, number 68-5-14 VTEC, Judge Walsh ruled specifically that our case law is clear that zoning approvals run with the land. So I'm pursuing a question which is relevant to this application and which if it can just be answered, it would really make things a lot easier. But if you want to ignore what the Superior Court says, go ahead. All right, I guess I'm, um, I'm gonna do two more things here. I'm gonna let this gentleman speak for just one quick Mr. moment, Mary. if you would. Um, <laughs> yeah, because Jeff may know better than I do just because I don't necessarily have all the timing correctly on when the condo association took ownership and who has the right to sign for the condo association because it's not something I have the information on. So the, the condo association was created just a few months ago. Okay. Okay. Um, they are aware of this application and this mm -hmm. use proposal for the building. Um, the college is in fact still a member of the association. Um, so if David's suggesting that Technically, they should have been a co-applicant. I, I think that's what I'm hearing from David. I don't know. They would have been signing as the owner, maybe, if Vermont College of Fine Arts doesn't have the authority to sign as the uh, on behalf of the condo association. Right, because the college has signed. The, so there's a legal technicality, I guess, we might want to explore and maybe amend the application if necessary. It would be having the condo association submit something to amend right yeah who's who's actually yeah. listening and, and we're happy to do that if that's what's necessary yeah but they are aware that this is you know this is what their request is um and to david's other concerns i mean we're kiana and i are happy to meet with you and you know offline and then answer other questions you might have and we'll probably answer them to your satisfaction and be able to well i'm sure we can negotiate a deal i just the first we heard of this application was the notice of hearing. And if the first we hear of an application is a notice of hearing, then this is what you forced me to do. So we're going to be up there on Thursday. And if you agree that the hearing should not be closed tonight, that would be great so that we can try and address some issues, come up with changes to the application so that the final approval can incorporate changes and we can all be done with it. Okay. All right. That's um that is your opinion and uh thank you for that and thank you for responding. Um I guess I'm interested in knowing whether other board members feel like they have all the information and what we um to look at this application. Uh I mean, in terms of other questions that I had, I did not have a lot of other questions for this applicant. Uh, if it, uh... oh, Joe has his hand up. Uh, go ahead. I'm just wanted to say that. Um... I really think that we should defer to the applicant in any kind of decision that we make tonight. Um, I would hate to vote on something thus angering certain members of the public into trying to torpedo something based on technicalities just because- It's not torpedoing, you're offensive. You're offensive. You know, you're defaming me and I won't let that happen. You have no business saying that. I have legal rights on behalf of my client. How dare you insult or impugn our motives? Hey, you are ignorant, Mr. Kiernan. You are ignorant. You're going to have to mute. You are okay. ignorant of the law, and I will not. Oh, please. That's great. But 
That being said, right. Whatever the applicant wants us to do in this situation, you know, if we want, if they want us to vote on it, postpone it, I whatever don't. it may be. Sorry, um, um, Kiana, do you need a minute or two? No, <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I don't think there's, unless there's anything wrong with your schedule of what you need to do here, uh, you know. So, the, um, so hold on one second, just yeah. so that everybody's oh, yeah. aware, right? So the, I'm sorry, I've got to find my agenda. Um, Mike, things got, yeah. so, um, so the next meeting um, is actually in three weeks because April has an extra Monday. So it would be May 6th. I do not have any other applications. So this would be the only thing on that meeting that would be continuation of this. Um, so just so that, um, Kiana, so that you and Jeff are aware. So, oh, yeah, hold on. Yeah. I guess yeah. the question might be timing. Mm -hmm. So June, let's just say May, May 6th, mm -hmm. and then you render a decision. And then it becomes final when the written decision written decision and then there's a 30 day, 30 appeal, day period. appeal period so that yeah. brings us through the i mean i have to write the decision it's usually pretty quick these days so it probably i would factor in a week because i have to write it has to be right. reviewed signed um Until late. so hold on let me just look um so may 6th so say may 13th um so then 30 days from 13th yeah it's like mid-june when it would be a appeal period would be over. Um, and depending on you know conditions, hopefully I'd be issuing the permit at the same time as the decision. Okay. Assuming that at all. Yeah, yeah that, that works. Okay. I would prefer to wait. Okay. Have a have okay. Have a chance to to meet. Yeah. If need be. So we'll put you okay. first on the agenda for the next meeting. Yes, thank you. I move that Mr. Kiernan be recused. I'm asking the counts, the DRB to recuse Mr. Kiernan. He has shown an ignorance. Yeah. David, uh, I don't know whether you picked up on any of that, but the applicant is, applicant is going to actually wait until the next meeting, which is uh, May 6th and um, has shown said that she's interested in speaking with you and working things out. And it sounds like there's a lot of great potential for that to happen. So I encourage that to happen. And we will look forward to seeing everybody uh, at the May 6th meeting. Can we, we, can, we do need a motion. I know, I'm okay. getting there. I'm sorry. <laughs> can I have a motion? <laughs> to close it up. Yeah. Can I have a motion to continue this hearing? So moved. To the- uh, I move that we continue this hearing until the next regularly scheduled meeting of the DRB on May 6th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Okay. I think I this, uh, uh, Brian? State opposed. Hmm? Uh, ask for the uh, yeah, I will. I'm just trying to get my votes here. Um, Brian, did you say aye? You're muted, Brian. I think you're there. Mm -hmm. All those uh, not in favor? All those opposed? Okay, hearing no opposition, um, I think we will continue this hearing until the 6th. Thank you very much for your time. Your project sounds very interesting. Thank you. And Thank your you. patience. <laughs> Welcome to uh, the public project. <laughs> I will be in the office tomorrow. If you guys have any specific questions or anything I can assist with. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, other business? What is, uh, no, we have the minutes to approve. Yep. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Um, the minutes from the April 1st meeting, I believe, is what's up on the block. Um, any comments or changes in the minutes? Go to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing no opposition, the motion passes. Um, okay. Uh, anybody else? Other business? Other things we need to talk about? 
I mean, I think this was a little bit of an interesting thing tonight where it was very difficult. Um, and I'd motion I'd, to uh, motion to adjourn. Huh? We still have, don't we have nope. uh, to go through the process of um, ending? Yeah. Oh, it's that's just that's a reminder to me to do my yeah. sheet because I have to do that. Which um, do that. Sorry, she yeah. to you, Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good night.